As of the day this video was made, COVID-19 illness has affected 183 countries and territories around the world. Reported cases have reached 259,051, with reported deaths pegged at 10,545. It is important to know that these are just the reported numbers. Actual numbers influenced by people with no symptoms or carriers, plus limited testing, would be a lot higher. Make no mistake about it. We need to take this seriously. While there is no need to panic, we have to heed the advice from our doctors and healthcare officials. Let us not repeat the mistakes from the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. For those of us who have no insight of those times, it infected a quarter of the world's population, about 500 million, and lasted three years, from 1918 to 1920. And no, it did not start in Spain. Due to news censorship, because of the ongoing World War I, reports of infection mortality in the United States, France, and the United Kingdom were suppressed or ignored. But the infection was spreading due to troop movements, close quarters, poor hygiene and health practices, and frankly, ignorance. When it hit Spain, they did not have the same news censorship, hence the false impression that they had more cases than anywhere else. After the pandemic, it seemed that humanity sort of forgot the lessons from this illness. We had great advances in medicine, including flu vaccines and antivirals. But we have had repeated outbreaks which could have been minimized or controlled to a degree if everyone did their part and observed certain practices. There is a concept in epidemiology called the r naught. It is defined as the average number of cases an infected person will cause during the infectious period. Scientists use this to estimate an outbreak. Generally, if that number is less than 1, the disease will die out. If it is more than one, then it will spread. This number, of course, depends on a lot of factors, including the community, general health, vaccination status, quarantine, and population density. Right now, the R0 for SARS-CoV-2 is estimated to be about 1.5 to 3.5. Now you don't have to be a math geek to see that this can and will spread exponentially if you don't do something about it. If you've been watching the news, we always hear about flattening the curve. But what is the curve? As you've heard, when the first case in China was confirmed, new cases only slowly trickled in. But eventually, you've seen more and more cases at a faster rate, mostly because of the r naught we just mentioned. Each case leads to 1.5 to 3.5 more cases. This is the concept of exponential growth. And next, let me show you this graph. This graph shows the spread in other countries showing the same exponential growth. Here you see Italy having a rapid rise in the last three weeks up to 41,035 cases. As per worldometers, Italy has 3,405 deaths, 33,190 active cases, and 2,498 of them were seriously critical as of production of this video. The other parts of this curve show that cases will eventually decline, either due to it resolving on its own, being treated, or people dying. What's the big deal, you say? Well, if a lot of people get sick in a short period of time, then the hospital system will get overwhelmed. Remember that a lot of emergency rooms and hospitals are busy to begin with, even without this COVID pandemic. We don't have enough hospital beds, doctors, nurses, or mechanical ventilators for everyone who gets sick. This means that eventually, and in some areas, it is happening already. People will not get the care that they need, COVID-19 infection or not. We don't want to reach the point where we have to choose who would get critical care or not, who deserves to live or not, or who has the best chance to survive or not. What can we do? Flattening the curve would allow doctors and other healthcare professionals to care for us better. This means that the sickest people would have the right resources for them, including hospital beds, ventilators, and needed treatment. A flatter curve can still mean the same number of people will get infected, but over a longer period of time. Hence, they get better treatment because of more available resources. This would also allow more time for our scientists to research new therapies, medications, and potentially a vaccine. Hopefully, this would mean suppliers will also be able to make more masks and personal protective equipment for our doctors and nurses. But we need everyone to do their part. If you are having mild symptoms, you need to self-isolate and contact your doctor. We also need to practice social distancing. This means avoiding other people whenever possible. At the very least, we need six feet between individuals. If you can, work from home. Avoid restaurants, bars, meetings, sports arenas, or any public areas. If it's not an emergency, postpone it. Flattening the curve can also mean closures of schools and businesses. It can also mean quarantines or lockdowns. On March 15, the CDC advised events of 50 or more people to be canceled for eight weeks. What happens if you don't flatten the curve? Well, it turns out we have a historic example. During the 1918 Spanish flu epidemic, 
Infectious disease experts were already warning government officials and military officials of a spreading disease. In Philadelphia, despite the warnings of avoiding large gatherings, they pushed through with the Liberty Loan Parade, which was attended by about 200,000 people. More than 12,000 people died in six weeks. At the end of six months, there were about half a million cases of the flu in Philadelphia. American Samoa, on the other hand, employed quarantine of suspected cases and social isolation. The result? Zero fatalities. Probably one of only a couple of places in the world who can say that. It is our duty now to prevent a similar catastrophe from happening. Our healthcare workers need help. This is no time for half-hearted measures. Not the time to be selfish. We need to stay home so our doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers can do their job safely. We need to prevent transmission so our most vulnerable population, our parents, the elderly, will be safe. Lastly, let us not hoard supplies. The masks and personal protective equipment need to be saved for our doctors and nurses. We need them to be able to do their jobs. What's going to happen if we lose them? Get the food you need. And toilet paper? Seriously? Thank you for listening. Please subscribe and hit the bell button for more health tips. Be safe and be healthier.